In the spring of 1966, several police officers in Portage County, Ohio, pursued an unidentified flying object for half an hour before watching it disappear into the night sky. The media brought the story to public attention, and popular interest compelled the Air Force to conduct an investigation. The Air Force's conclusion that the officers had misidentified ordinary occurrences opened the witnesses up to a torrent of ridicule. Some of the witnesses, already emotionally disturbed by what they'd seen, were so harshly scrutinized that they quit the force to escape the public eye. As well as being an intriguing case in its own right, the Portage County chase compels us to consider the human toll of ridiculing UFO witnesses, and to question the morality of the Air Force's debunking agenda. On the morning of April 16, 1966, Deputy Sheriff Dale Spower of the Portage County Police was working the midnight shift with Mounted Deputy Wilbur Neff. At approximately 4.45 a.m., the men received a radio call informing them that a woman in neighboring Summit County had reported seeing a gigantic, brilliant light drifting through the area. Neither Neff nor Spower took the report seriously until they saw the light for themselves later that morning. Spower had stopped the car on the shoulder of Route 224 to investigate an abandoned vehicle when he spotted a bright light rising out of the surrounding woods. He alerted Neff, who then saw it for himself. The light ascended to an estimated 100 feet above ground level, then drifted over top of the two officers as they stood staring from the highway. They compared its size to that of a house, but they could not ascertain its structure due to the intensity of the light. It made only a gentle humming noise and stood perfectly still in the sky. As the men stood staring, the light increased in brightness to the point of completely illuminating the surrounding area. The men instinctually ran back to their car, and after a few moments of indecision, radioed into the sheriff's office. Soon after, the apparent object began flying away, and the men chased it down the highway. Meanwhile, Officer Wayne Houston, sitting in his car near East Palestine, Ohio, some 40 miles away, got in touch with Spower by radio. By Spower's guide, Houston managed to position himself along the object's flight path as it moved down Route 14. When it passed his cruiser, the object was an estimated 800 to 900 feet off the ground. Houston described it as being in the shape of an inverted cone, with a misshapen dome over top. Another officer estimated the object to be between 25 and 30 feet in diameter at its widest point. Houston joined the pursuit, and together the two cars chased the object across the border and into Pennsylvania. Although at times they reached speeds of nearly 105 miles an hour, the officers never got within half a mile of the target. It consistently outpaced their cars, and yet it seemed to deliberately follow highway lines as if to encourage the pursuit. By the end of the night, the chase had covered some 60 miles of highway across Ohio and Pennsylvania. Finally, around 6 a.m., an officer Frank Panzanella caught sight of the object from a vantage point in Conway, Pennsylvania. For 10 minutes, he watched the object hover in the air, then rapidly ascend to an estimated 3,500 feet in altitude. At this time, Spower and Houston pulled up beside Panzanella's cruiser. All four of the officers then watched the object rise up in the sky and disappear from sight. They never saw it again. After the media broke the story of the Portage County UFO, Air Force Project Blue Book was obliged to launch an investigation. Blue Book's scientific consultant, J. Allen Hynek, noted that when Project Director Major Quintanilla called Spower to get a witness statement, he began the conversation by asking the officer to tell him about the mirage that he'd seen. The conversation lasted only two and a half minutes. The follow-up call was even shorter. Quintanilla had evidently tried to get Spower to state that the chase had lasted only a few minutes, and ended the call soon after he failed. With only these two short phone calls on which to base his hypothesis, Quintanilla concluded that the men had begun chasing a communication satellite and switched over to chasing Venus later in the morning. This in spite of the fact that no satellite was in view on the night in question, that the witnesses had all reported seeing Venus in addition to the unidentified flying object, and that Hynek, an astronomer, disagreed with this conclusion. Quintanilla conducted more interviews in Portage County only after pressure from Congress forced him to do so, but he never spoke to officers Houston and Panzanella. Though the Portage County Sheriff was supportive of the witnesses in the case, he could not shield them from the ridicule of their fellow officers and that of the general public. Unable to cope with the negative attention he was receiving, Houston left the force and moved to Seattle, Washington. Having been the only direct witness mentioned by name in the Project Blue Book report, Spower took the greatest share of the public scrutiny. 
The stress he incurred as a result led directly to the dissolution of his marriage and his ultimate retreat from the public eye. When a journalist with the Associated Press managed to interview Spauer six months after the chase, he found him living in a motel in Salon, Ohio, on a meager income of $80 a week. The Portage County Chase offers a clear demonstration of the consequences of ridiculing honest UFO witnesses, and it raises the question of how many witnesses leave sightings unreported for fear of similar treatment. It's a fact that UFO sightings amongst police and military personnel are relatively common, but one can only wonder how many more sightings have never been brought to public attention. It may even be that the majority of such fascinating encounters are taken to the grave with their bewildered witnesses.